preached conference physically since our part of the universe uh, came under the COVID attack uh, in 2020. Uh, we've not met physically since 2019. So it's really a moment of pleasure that we are able to reunite physically. We know uh, the pandemic is not over, as Paul has been guiding us on some of the precautions to take, and we must remain vigilant. But we must also uh, congratulate and thank the scientific community that has given us the tools to be able to cope and fight back against the pandemic. Of course, lots of havoc has been wreaked across countries, but that life can be able to continue is credit to what the scientific community can be able to do. So on behalf of the RCM MRG Governing Council, staff on my own behalf, a warm welcome once again to RCM MRG, which is your home. And as many now refer it to it as the home of GIS and remote sensing on the continent, always feel free whenever you are within the presence of this uh, organization. Indeed, calling RCM MRG a continental geo home is in accord with the vision of its founders who almost 50 years ago envisioned a center that would champion the application of geospatial information and technologies in not only addressing pressing national issues but also spur development across the continent. So we hope we are living to that ideal and the presence of our governing council members here is testimony to that. It is in line with that vision that the center, together uh, with our esteemed partners, many of whom are here today, that the center has continued to provide services, tools, data, and information derived from Earth observations and allied IC technologies to support decision making in various areas uh, such as agriculture and food security weather and climate, water resources management, disaster management, land use and ecosystems, land information management, to mention just but a few. This we do through project implementation. And as I said, many of the partners we have here through their presentations and the exhibition that we have, you'll be able to learn some of the important transformative projects that we're implementing across uh, the African continent. We do capacity building uh, both to people already in their jobs, but as you have realized, we also have a growing institute at the center here that is offering cutting edge uh, training in our fields of surveying, cartography, photogrammetry, GIS, etc. The RCTI that has been growing over the past few years, and now has a population of over 800 students undertaking different diploma and certificate courses. Uh, besides project implementation and capacity building, we also do work with you to undertake critical research uh, initiatives to answer some of the pressing problems on our continent and in our countries. And of course, from that, we offer advisory services. Very often when there are issues that require attention, we are called upon and we are happy that you join us in understanding the issues and providing advisory to member states and other stakeholders. Back to this conference, uh, which made its maiden appearance in 2017, it is also in line of exactly what I've said in terms of our services to member states, because it offers an opportunity for us as the center and the entire geo community to share what we do. You will see it through the different themes that we have over the past two days, through the exhibition we have uh, across this tent, that there are a number of things that you may not be aware of, familiar with, that you have an opportunity to know the projects and activities that are underway. But also, when people come together, it will be an opportunity to exchange ideas on the latest methodologies and applications. Actually, this began yesterday, and I wish to thank Ezri and the Digital Earth Africa, who, through a pre-conference event, were able to do some training and share some of the methodologies and 
uh, technologies that are available to the number of attendants that came from across our member states. So despite uh, the COVID-19 uh, setback, the conference has evidently uh, grown over the years, attracting attention across the continent and beyond. And over its short life, RIC uh, is becoming a premier conference within which many uh, presenters in our field are ready and interested in meeting uh, their counterparts. Of particular interest is the growth in interest from young people and women in particular uh, in our geo community. Uh, we've had a number of themes over the years. Uh, if you recall, uh, for those of you who have been able to attend the series of uh, conferences we've had, in 2017, our theme was Space Science Touches Lives. That was our maiden conference where we began by looking at what space science can be able to do to the person on the, uh, on the ground. In 2018, our theme was Space Science for Sustainable Development broadening the scope to look more particularly what areas in our sustainable development endeavors uh, space science can impact. 2019, the theme was Earth Observations for Evidence-Based Decision Making. Obviously, we need to make a connection between what we do as geo people and our decision makers who really influence the direction our countries take. Uh, we didn't have one in 2020, but 2021, our theme was reflecting on resilience, mapping development challenges and solutions for a better world. And then we've moved on this year, and our theme is Earth Observation Services for Resilient Social Systems, where we will seek to explore the linkages between social systems and the potential as well as opportunities that Earth Observations offer uh, to strengthening the social systems within our countries. So as individuals, organizations, uh, countries, and continents continue to implement the Sustainable Development Goals, which uh, rally the world uh, towards a shared blueprint uh, for peace and prosperity for people and planet, technology, and no less your special technology, offer is, a, is, a, is very critical in is very crucial in building resilient social systems. And as I said, our own technology is very critical as we'll see from the presentations. So in the midst of many present day development challenges, uh, such as flooding, that I wish to share our sympathies with our, with our friends from Sudan who are experiencing floods, but we've experienced it in our, in our other uh, countries like Malawi. So this, uh, natural disasters continue to afflict our countries. We still have food security challenges, even in this country, in the same arid areas of this country and other parts of the Horn of Africa. We have water security challenges. We have pressing problems of urbanization. And in the midst of all that, we need to ask ourselves what we bring to the table as people who monitor and understand the earth on which all this is happening. And it is my sincere hope that through this conference, we can be able to share our knowledge and possibilities for mitigating them and the recovery where we have experienced such unfortunate incidences. So in conclusion, I hope uh, this conference inspires everybody towards our number one goal of finding solutions that will improve resilience of social systems and in some way, contribute sustainable development. So feel free to interact. This is the reason we are here today. I believe each one of us has an important element to bring to the table. Finally, but most importantly, even though I did it at the beginning, I wish to thank once again our governing council. And maybe if I'm allowed to indulge, I'll request the representative of Sudan, who is part of our governing council, and Andre from ECA uh, to stand up for recognition as I conclude. Salah uh, from the Sudan, and Andre, also member of the Governing Council. Please, you can just say hello to the people here.
So for those of you who are not familiar with our governing structure, we are led by a governing council that includes uh, representatives from the 20 member states and ECA. And this is like our board, they give us direction in terms of what we do. On top, there's a conference of ministers that supervise their work to give us strategic direction. And all of them will be convening in Kampara in November to again see how we can take further the work of this institution. So their support and what we do is very important and I wish uh, that they acknowledge in this uh, conference. Thank you for being with us. In the same vein, even though they'll have uh, time to speak, our partners uh, that uh, really work with us in all the programs that we do are cherished and they'll introduce themselves. But for those that are here, uh, I'll just mention the names, but I'll also re uh, request those who are here to uh, wave. So some of our key partners are USID, NASA, EU, AU, I've mentioned Esri, thank uh, you from Esri. Uh, we have Digital Earth Africa represented there. We have PASCO represented here. We have Kenya Airways and specifically Fahari Aviation represented here. Uh, we have FAO on the way. But we have other partners that will join online, including uh, C4. We have IUCN represented here. Uh, we will have uh, AU joining online as well. But the broader partnership includes other people such as UNDP, UNIDO, AGRA, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So there's a whole host of people that are part of what we achieve as a center. So we are here as a secretariat, we are here as an executive, but the work we do here is a contribution by uh, several institutions. Uh, I can't leave the stage without thanking our host government, uh, the Republic of the Government of the Republic of Kenya, who have hosted this institution uh, since its inception. They provide us the, env the environment to function and support us in every activity. And it's for that reason that we'll be having the guest honor of honor representing the government and delivering and opening this conference. So thank you very much for uh, your attention. And once again, feel at home. You are geo people. This is a geo home, so you are at home. Thank you very much.